بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم مائی نیم از شاد محمد اینڈ آئی ایم این آرتھوٹسٹ آئی ایم بیسٹ ان دبائی سو آئی ہیپ آئی ہوپ مور پیپل ول جوائن می سون اور رائٹ سو آئی ویلکم ایوری ون ہو ول جوائن می ناؤ اینڈ لیٹر and we had a we had a small uh, i mean a session uh, earlier which was interrupted by some technical uh, problems so inshallah ta'ala we will uh, uh, try again and today's topic is about uh, uh, knee deformities and knee orthotics uh, so we have to complete that you can say that this is the part number two now the <coughs> before i uh, before i proceed to my uh, topic uh, i will tell each and every one uh, my students uh, and your respectable staff that uh, try to uh, be innovative and uh, in your field uh, that means that you should do something new uh, something different and uh, if you have you are short of resources there is always an option to uh, write something Uh, write an article, write a book, uh, write any essay, uh, write anything professional, uh, anything. Uh, but uh, don't waste time uh, in your professional life, in your student life. It's very important. So like uh, uh, 20, 21 years ago, uh, when I was a student, uh, I joined a job. Uh, so then I had a time and I wrote this drop foot book, uh, which is an orthotic management of drop foot. So this is just uh, like uh, 50 pages of book, uh, which I had my very old computer in those days. Uh, but to be very honest with you, since then, uh, I do write things, but I could not write a book. So this is my asset. And uh, it was uh, written at a very difficult time. And uh, I encourage you uh, that you should start writing and uh, preserve your writing, store it and uh, make a book, make something new. then inshallah ta'ala you will be uh, proud of your work in your uh, future so that was a small tip and uh, advice for my dear students now we will come to the topic and the topic of the day is uh, the uh, knee orthosis and uh, deformities so as we discussed in the early early uh, 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 lecture that uh, knee is a very stable joint of the body and uh, it is a polycentric joint it is a hinge joint and uh, it take a lot of weight in the stance phase and sometime even in the, the mid stance phase so its stability is very crucial to the lower limb uh, and the whole body so if the knee uh, muscles whether they are flexor extensor they are not capable to keep the knee stable it is very difficult to uh, for a person to walk so knee uh, good health is very important from either aspect uh, whether it's a patella it is a uh, collateral ligaments uh, meniscus or f- condyles tibial plateau so it's very important our cruciate ligaments it's very important that uh, it is in a good uh, condition so a knee is uh, prone to of course too many issues like any other part of the body and uh, if we uh, divide uh, like uh, in the um, uh, congenital and uh, any other deformation or any uh, traumatic conditions of the knee Uh, so you know that uh, it has a uh, plenty of issues like uh, it uh, goes in uh, vulgus it goes in varus and goes in uh, hyperextension it also uh, lose its uh, uh, inter uh, compartment uh, uh, space in, like in osteoarthritis arthritis and it has also traumatic condition like uh, patella uh, lateralization uh, the ptb band issues inflammation etc and uh, it has also fracture in the uh, femoral condyle and sometimes the tibial condyles uh, traumatic uh, conditions and uh, there's also degenerative issue the knees like uh, uh, osteoarthritis or uh, sometimes osteophytes uh, uh, degeneration of the uh, mm, uh, structure of the uh, knee joint so that means that uh, when there is a uh, uh, instability uh, degeneration then uh, the knee joint is basically not functioning properly Uh, it, because it is not in a right uh, anatomical position it has pathological conditions 
and its whole biomechanic is changed so it can't function properly that means it may not be able to bend properly because it may crush a lot of surfaces or it may cause more wear and tear and it may not bear the body weight in the stance phase because it is not uh, stable so this is the structure of the knee in the same time there is a uh, uh, issue with the muscular issues like in the polymyelitis, like in a cerebral palsy patients, uh, hemiplegic, paraplegics, that the cordyceps are not functioning properly. Uh, Sometimes there is a loss of some hamstring powers, which is very occasional, and uh, there is some rotational issue in the knees. Uh, so these uh, muscular imbalances and structural problems they cause the knee weakness and the knee instability. So as a result, uh, the person cannot. Uh, the person cannot walk properly and the person cannot bo bear body weight properly. So it is very uh, important that uh, we control these issues if you want to function properly. So as the knee is a part of the lower limb, so it depends a lot on the healthy structure of the foot. If the foot is a uh, good condition, then the knee is also in better position. So keeping the foot in the right position, keeping the foot in the right aligned position to prevent and to stop any sort of deviation in the foot, it is very important that we keep especially the calcaneus of the, sh the foot very much straight and stable. When the calcaneus is stable, because it is the base of the body, is the base of the foot, it take more than, it almost take 50% of the body weight. So when the calcaneus is stable, then normally the knee is very stable. So you will see like in pes plano valgus, when the calcaneus is twisted, so it not only cause the ankle and sub ankle or the foot problem, but it, it also cause problem uh, in the knee joint. So it is very important that the foot is stable, so then the person can walk uh, easily. Now there are a lot of condition of the knees which we can control through the feet. So sometimes the condition is mild, it's not severe, then you can always attempt to control the condition through feet. For example, if the patient has a mild knee hyperextension, you don't need to attempt with the knee restriction. You can simply take a small heel of a centimeter and you can keep under the foot. It will keep the ankle in dorsiflexion and you will see that the knee will come in flexion. That means you can control the dorsiflexion, if, uh, sorry, the uh, knee hyperextension, which also we call it geno recurvatum. So knee hyperextension can be controlled by placing an appropriate heel under the uh, shoe or the patient heel. So you can dorsiflex the ankle and subsequently you can bring the knee in flexion. Number one. Number two, <coughs> sorry, sometime as we also discussed in the previous uh, class that uh, we, uh, we face a lot of issues in the knees like uh, uh, geno valgus and varum and now it is as osteoarthritis arthritis and uh, rheumatoid arthritis is very common. So we also uh, face issues with the knee when there, uh, where there is a compartment space problem. So you will see in the uh, osteoarthritis patients the knee is going in varus position because the medial compartment space is reduced and there's a tremendous pressure on the uh, meniscus and the mm, surrounding soft tissues. So in these cases it is very important that we push the knee gently to the medial side, inside. So for these purposes we always try with the wedges. Now wedge is a, a side raise of the foot. So if you see it is a five millimeter thick but then you see it is uh, other side it is very much zero so that means you can have lateral wedge you can have medial wedge if you want to lift the foot from lateral side you can use it as a lateral wedge so it will be higher on the outer side zero on the medial side so if and it will twist the foot it will create space between the medial compartment and that give a lot of relief to the patient when there is a compression of the compartment. So you can try the lateral wedges for your patient who have uh, lost gap of the joint uh, medially uh, and you can insert these wedges inside the shoes comfortably 
and they can walk and they will have great uh, impact. Another uh, important point for the uh, osteoarthritis patient, uh, arthritis patients, or uh, any other traumatic condition where there is a reduction of the space, uh, there is instability in the knees. Uh, you can try with the closed shoes, which is the shoes must be closed from the back. That means that the heel counter should be hard and stiff enough. It can control the calcaneus deviation. And then inside what we do that we keep for the balance purposes uh, a very regular insoles. Inserts. So these are placed inside and uh, provided the shoe is closed from the back and then you see it has a very appropriate heel. So you will see all the medical shoes, all orthopedic footwear, they will have a proper heel height because 1 to 1.5 centimeter heel height is must for each and every one to realign the whole body, to facilitate mobilization, to reduce pressure on the joint and to prevent any deformation in the joint. That means that the biomechanical function of the body is improved with the uh, appropriate heel. So appropriate, appropriate heel and the heel part closed and inside any support. It makes huge difference for the patient with the osteoarthritis. They feel more stable and they feel more relieved because their feet are aligned and then the knees are also aligned to a certain extent. Because a lot of geriatric cases are even elderly ladies they uh, reluctantly accept any sort of uh, knee braces because of their sometimes their shape of the thigh, shape of the knee, or sometimes suffocation, congestion. So then you can try with the shoes, wedges or insoles. So uh, uh, if you want to raise the heel, you can also, <coughs> sorry, if you, you can raise the heel with the silicon heel also. It is a shock absorber and uh, you can put inside the shoes and uh, it will raise and cushion the heel part. So it is also very effective for uh, knee problems to use these kind of uh, heels. Now, uh, this is about how to manage uh, knee problems through the feet. Uh, so now we go to the knees. Uh, now in the knee orthotics, in the knee orthosis, we have customized braces and we have uh, ready-made braces. So, Customized braces are mainly made for the correction of the joints, uh, for the uh, paralysis in paralysis cases, in spastic paralysis, in flaccid paralysis, and also in some permanent uh, uh, condition which are caused by traumas or anything else. But in general, the knee braces we divide in three groups. The first group is we call the soft group, the soft supports. Now the soft supports are basically support which come with compression. Compression is uh, needed in too many cases because uh, when there is some sort of inf inflammation in the joint, it causes edema, it causes swelling, and that causes restriction of movement. And then it is important that we remove that edema and we compress the joint so the patient gets stable. So these are these kind of braces, and uh, they are high compression. The patient can wear it easily. The patient can walk with this easily. And uh, these uh, support are also coming with the nice, uh, uh, what we call the patella strap. So you can see the patella strap in circle, the patella come in the center. So they also don't allow any sort of patella lateralization, which is very common. Compression makes the joint stable, it removes edema, it controls swelling, it improves proprioception, and the patient can bend the knee without any further damage of the soft tissues. And uh, it is highly recommended when the patient is in move. And uh, it is not recommended when the patient is sleeping or at rest. And again, these are not recommended for diabetic cases where there are uh, chances of low blood circulation. So you must use them when the patient is active. When the patient is passive, you must not use these kind of support. So they are washable, they come in sizes, and you can use them for your patient conveniently. Now, this is basically for a very general purposes. Now, sometimes, in some cases, we have the mediolateral instability of the uh, knee joint. So, in those cases, you will uh, have some braces which come with the hinges, basically, which come with the supports. Now, this is a knee brace, and it is op open from the front. Uh, it can be closed, basically, uh, but sometimes to give relief to the patella, we keep it open. Now, 
these braces they are coming with the you know, hinge inside you can see the metallic joint inside now this metallic joint one is uh, on the outer side of the knee and the other one inside so they come normally in the right and left uh, sides and they also come in sizes so these braces they provide medullary stability in which cases where there's a uh, damage to the collateral ligaments uh, or meniscus uh, and you think that we need to realign the knee <coughs> so in these cases we need to uh, we need to uh, stabilize the knee medullary so these are also elastic knee supports but they are with the hinges so they not only compress the joints but they also uh, stabilize the joint medullary now these knee joints uh, knee supports which are elastic uh, occasionally uh, they are causing uh, some sort of edema in the feet so be careful if it causes edema in the feet uh, or swelling uh, then no need to worry because purely because of the knee maybe you need to change the size or maybe you need to use it when the patient is active so that is uh, about the uh, compression knee support now then we go to the uh, other type of knee braces which we call the range of motion now these range of motion braces are basically uh, used for the post operative cases and uh, they are coming with the adjustable range of motion so you can easily basically uh, fix the flexion and extension and they are uh, very long because they normally run from almost from the ankle above the ankle to the almost the end of the thigh so that means uh, maximum support is given and uh, the idea is normally to control any sort of rotation of the knee so you will see all these braces very long basically so the long the brace is the more supportive it is especially post surgical now these braces are basically uh, comes in one sizes which can be fit to every patient and uh, these braces can be used like a knee mobilizer also so there is a, a special system in these which basically you can lock it and then it, 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 it will not move so it is not moving now but if you want to unlock it then it will move to the desired range of motion whatever you fix here for example you want to fix a flexion extension uh, restraint you can do it so flexion extension control is here and if you want to lock it completely you have also this system here so you can use these kind of cases for uh, braces for the post operative cases and you can also use them for uh, deformed knees you can also use them for paralytic knees uh, if you want to mobilize uh, the patient and uh, they have nothing with the blood circulation like the uh, compression supports because compression support may uh, uh, affect the blood circulation uh, but these are open uh, type of support and they will not obstruct any sort of blood circulation provided they are uh, fitted nicely and uh, uh, they are fitted by a specialist so it is important that uh, the mechanical knee joint of these supports is coincide with the anatomical joint so you have an anatomical joint of the knee and that is normally uh, in the location where when you extend the knee uh, it comes in the center of the knee so you keep the knee in extension so the center of the knee is the center of the patella all right but in case if there is a patient where there is no patella uh, due to any reason then you can mark the uh, tibial plateau and you can go above that 1.5 to 2 centimeters you will find the knee joint so when you place the knee braces then the knee braces must come right on the center of the knee joint because if these joints don't coincide together then uh, most probably the patient will have a lot of pressure from the brace and it may not uh, work uh, conveniently it may cause some sort of pain or it may cause uh, some sort of uh, rotational issues in the joint so this is about the uh, range of motion now then we have the uh, hard braces which are very common uh, these hard braces are basically used again for the uh, pre-operative cases and uh, they have a range of motion so by removing these clips uh, it has a flexion extension options which we adjust and these are aluminium made and they are extremely lightweight because these are for mobility purposes so basically you can uh, fit on the right and left side 
they come in sizes and uh, it is very important that you fit these bands and the tie properly and the calf properly and all these straps are fastened according to the instructions of the brace and uh, again it is very important that the center of the joint should coincide with the anatomical joint. Now these braces are basically for the purpose that in case uh, there, is a, uh, there is a danger of uh, flexing, uh, flexion of the knee may cause some sort of uh, soft tissue wear and tear or if the tissues are not stretchable after the surgery then we need to put this kind of braces because they will cause, they will give you an option of gradual movement. So at the same time there is a healing process and the same time there is also uh, mm, uh, stretching of the ligaments uh, so the patient will recover quickly. So if you don't use these braces then the ligaments uh, tendons they heal in such position they may need very long to stretch and then the functional period may take very long. So the braces need to be used uh, with a great care uh, with a selected range of motion and uh, very gradual and uh, they give you a perfect result uh, when the patient want to be mobilized. So to select the right type of brace it is very important that uh, you choose uh, the right brace for the patient uh, to mobilize him. Uh, so for the reason that uh, to contain the existing problem of the patient and to prevent further issues of the uh, patient. So uh, these braces are basically uh, uh, used also in the sports uh, for sports purposes uh, for routine activities and uh, they are uh, harmless in a sense that they don't restrict movement so the muscular atrophy chances are uh, very uh, less so this uh, range of motion is also available in the compression bandages in the compression supports because sometimes we have joint leg disease and these joint legs it is need again compression of the uh, support. So again you have these dials uh, where, where you, can, uh, ext you can select the flexion extension conveniently and uh, the patient can use these braces by themselves easily and uh, they are very effective if they are used in the right, uh, right uh, type and the right uh, uh, time. So that is about the uh, knee braces. Then I have one more uh, device for you which is which is uh, basically knee mobilizer. Sorry. Now uh, this is a typical uh, knee mobilizer which we use for highly unstable knees. Now as it is very clear from the name that the knee mobilizer basically uh, does not allow any sort of movement. And uh, these knee mobilizers, they are uh, reinforced with the uh, metallic uh, stays at the back and, when, and you see they are curved. So they are curved like a knee position. So whenever you want to fit these braces, they may need certain customization. You cannot fit ready-made braces as they are because knee controls are very sensitive. And when the patient want to move, then they rub the surfaces of the knee against the surfaces of the brace and that is very painful. So always try to learn the basics and uh, you may need these basics while you fit the brace on the patient. The first important point is to coincide the uh, anatomical joint with the mechanical joint. The second is if there is a metallic stage you have to contour them so the patient will be very comfortable with these. So knee mobilizer is used for highly unstable knees are post-operative cases where no movement is allowed at that time and any patellar lateralization and even patellar fracture it is used. So these are also useful in case uh, still you are waiting for diagnosis and then you can always use the uh, knee uh, immobilizer. The patient must not bend the knee without any uh, reason. So this is the knee immobilizer. Now uh, another point which I want to explain to you that there are also knee braces which are basically for therapeutic purposes. Now these are braces where you have the adjustable resistance here. So the brand name is Protonix and uh, these are the knee braces which you use for the strengthening of the quadriceps and hamstrings. So you simply uh, place this brace on the leg of the patient 
and uh, then you can basically manually adjust the resistance here. So I can show you more. Yes. So here. So you can just turn it and they get harder and softer. So these are called uh, protonics and uh, they are very useful for patients uh, when they are post-operative. So you can fit them to make their muscles stronger, uh, whether quadriceps or uh, hamstrings. Uh, so they are not typical knee braces, but they are used for therapeutic purposes and uh, exercise purposes, uh, where you need a different level of resistance for the muscles to improve the uh, strength of the uh, knee joint. So this is uh, a different issue. Now I have, I think, one more device for you, which I discussed uh, last time. Uh, let me search for this, if I can get it for you. Okay, that was the uh, patella band. I don't find it here. Uh, the patella band is basically for the uh, uh, tibial uh, PTB uh, tendon inflammation which is normally inside here with the rubbing. So we have this patella band which we basically compress this uh, PTB and uh, it is used for the healing purposes and at the same time it prevents further stretching or over stretching of the uh, tendon, uh, the band. So that is a, called the PTB band and we use it plenty for the players. Uh, because they don't want to use the knee supports and uh, it allows a free range of motion and it is, uh, uh, it is very convenient and open-ended and uh, accepted by the uh, patient uh, widely. Now, important point I will tell you that all these knee braces, uh, knee is basically like a joint which everyone wants to have free joint because it is involved in too many activities and to, uh, uh, without the healthy knee joint, it is difficult to perform normal activities. So it is very important that you recommend a brace which uh, patient accept easily and the compliance level is high. So if you recommend the best brace and the compliance level is low, then it is very difficult that you get the required results. So keep in mind that uh, whenever you have patient and uh, uh, you think that the patient need uh, knee support, uh, study it very well and uh, before you give information to your patient, don't disclose things. Uh, you make yourself very clear that really I studied his case and uh, I think this type of brace is appropriate and then you should have a reason for that because this patient may ask you plenty of reasons. So then you must be very convincing and then you can give the right type of breast. So before you have the reasons or before you have decided, when you explain to the patient, the patient gets confused and you have too many cases like this because the breasts are too many of type and uh, when you tell them that you need a knee breast, well he says which kind of knee breast and then you are stuck. And that is, that is the uh, time where the you, patient lose confidence. Uh, over your uh, recommendation. So it is very important when you recommend a device, uh, you should uh, think uh, twice and justify your device, uh, find reasons and then slowly and gradually explain to your patient that well this is the situation, you will need a knee brace and because uh, it is like this more beneficial and in case if you don't use it, then we can face these kind of problems. So normally there are no issues. So it's a very uh, tricky, uh, tactical and uh, professional approach which you should uh, adopt uh, to your patients. Then inshallah you will manage your patient very well and uh, the results are uh, very good. So I think uh, that's uh, from my side. If you want to ask me some question now, I will take some question. Uh, let me see, search some question. All right. All right. So, 
I can't see any question here. Let me Okay. Which brace is used in knee OA patients? Aqsa Aslam. So Aqsa Ji, uh, in the OA patients, uh, as you know, that there is a alignment issue of the knee joint. So it is important that uh, we realign the knee. So whether there's a line issue in the medial compartment or lateral, but mostly there's a medial compartment in, uh, involved. So the idea is to relieve the medial compartment from excessive pressure. So that means if this is the right knee, which is, so you may have more pressure on the medial condyle uh, compartment. So it is important that uh, you uh, try with the wedge, uh, which I explained to you earlier, you can use this wedge uh, 4 millimeter even, you can make it 6 millimeter. In worst case, you can go for 8 millimeter even. When tilt the foot, it really causes a lot of relief in the compartment of the uh, knee. And in case if this was not enough, and uh, let's say a la the lady is very heavy and uh, the man is very heavy and the deviation is too much, then you need to have a brace which is normally uh, a rigid brace one. Because they will, uh, this will realign the knee and uh, the person will be able to move the knee very uh, easily because of flexion and extension. Now, there are some braces available where you can correct the valgus and varus of the knee with these bars. So, these braces are uh, from Germany and uh, they are adjustable. So, you can correct the varus and valgus. So, if there is a less, uh, less compartment space in the medial condyle, the knee might go in virus position. So you need a brace which can carry the virus position and they are available. So in OA, in OA patients, you can try with the wedges, with the good shoes, closed shoes, or you can use a, a corrective braces for the knee. Any other question? All right, you can ask question and uh, let me tell you there is no wrong question. The question is never wrong. The answer can be wrong. And I encourage you to ask questions because questions speak your mind. Ask intelligent questions, good questions. And even if it is a bad question, you can ask. Uh, but don't think that your question is wrong. So always, so then we have, uh, can you explain that PTB thing again? Uh, yeah, the PTB thing, uh, basically, um, let me just search here, because the PTB thing I brought, oh yes, it's, uh, if you just give me a second, I can just take it for you. Uh, this is interesting from physiotherapy point of view. Okay, it is here. Yes, so I got it. Now, uh, this is a patella band, and uh, yeah. now this patella band has a silicon inside. So, you can see it has a gel band. Now, when there is a PTB inflammation, patella tendon inflammation, inflammation is here. Now, this tendon, when the patient flex and extend the knee, then the inflammation get worse and worse. And normally all this area is involved with the inflammation. So it is very important that we control the stretching of the band. So this band need to be fastened like this. So for this purpose, we have this band. Now this band, it goes exactly on this area, in this area, and then you fasten from the back. So the patient can still walk, the patient can still move the knee in flex and extension, but the inflamed part is basically tightly fastened. So that is, uh, that relieves the pain and that improve healing process and that give a lot of comfort to the patient. This, it's called the uh, patella band. You can simply say patella band for the patella tendon inflammation. Then we have Shiba Sonia, which type of knee brace for flat feet with degeneration changes occur in the knee joint? Well, uh, 
if there's a, a flat feet in the flat feet condition, of course it has an impact on the knees. So we have to control the flat feet tendency. We have to align the feet, and then you go to the upper part, which is a knee joint. So if there's a degeneration in the joint. So from an arthrotic point of view, we can facilitate movement of the knee joint. We can't do anything at degeneration, but we can make sure when the patient moves the joint, it is smooth, less friction, and comfortable. Then we have Anjali, uh, a patient who has been operated for a tibia. Oh, uh, is is gone. Uh, I, I I could not read your question. Uh, uh, Anjali. Uh, Karina Khan, sir, which brace you recommend for knee pain? If it is a mild knee pain, uh, not a big diagnosis, uh, then you can always use the compression knee support. Uh, it's enough. You can use it daytime for activity purposes. Uh, they stabilize the joint and they control inflammation, uh, improve proprioception, and uh, normally it, they control pain. Then we have a question from... Uh, Anya Chaudhary, sir, how we can treat ACL injury in physical therapy? Well, I can show you a brace of ACL, uh, but I think for physical therapy, you can ask the head of your department uh, or uh, your uh, most favorite teacher. Uh, but I can tell you that we have braces for the ACL and PCL, and the idea is to um, control the movement of the knee gradually, not to put pressure on the ACL and PCL, and uh, to allow the ACL and PCL to heal. And uh, these braces are harmless and they are really helpful in mobilization and to uh, help heal the uh, ACL or PCL. Then we have uh, another question from Sayyida Reba. Will an unloading brace halt or reverse the disease? Yes, when there is a relief in the joint, when there is an unloading, uh, which you also call offloading, uh, then the disease may regress, uh, it will not progress, this is for sure. So there is a, a lot of inflammatory cases or pathological cases that uh, when we relieve the joint, when we relieve certain part of the joint, then the situation improve. Uh, Rafia Sagir, uh, answer my question, sir, yeah, uh, yeah it's gone. Uh, really, I can't uh, bring it back. I'm so sorry. Is IT band tightness can be to OA? Uh, Saman Arshad, uh, uh, yes. The answer is yes. Tara, compression bandages post operative may use karte hain ya pre operative mein? Compression bandages to aap uh, pre operative cases may use karte hain, jahan par aap ki joint mein in kuch in mild inflammation ho, mild pain ho, ya mild ko soft tissue injuries ho. Because ye movement ko restrict nahi karte, ye sirf compression karte hain, edema ko nikalte hain. So you can use them preoperatively. Post operatively tabhi use karte hain jab last stage ho. And the patient want to mobilize his joint. Thinking ke joint ke andar operation ke baad kuch na kuch swelling to hoti hai. To usko nikalni ke liye zaruri hai ke hum compression bani istemal kare. Okay, Faryal Hossein, sir, all these things you use to treat knee joint, sir, anyone who can use the treater, oh my god, this is gone, I am so sorry. Uh, Rafi Sahi, do you have a controlled disc herniation pain by using any kind of foot orthosis? Uh, disc herniation, that is something you have to target specifically in the back, so foot se itna asar uspe nahi padda. Uh, so I think uh, you have to target the disc uh, per, uh, particularly. It is very important uh, topic. Okay, thank you, Soha. Uh, if there is any patient who has a brace operated by ulcer of oh, spinal tendons, oh my God, this question is uh, so fast and really I can't catch them. Okay, uh, Nemra Nawaz, is it okay to wear the knee brace all day and still need to do exercise while wearing knee brace? Yes, you can uh, wear the compression knee braces while you are exercising, but you can't do exercise with the hard brace because they may damage your skin. 
Yasha, sir, which brace is recommended for foot slap or foot drop? Uh, we use uh, drop foot splints and they are available in the variety, uh, depend from, uh, like, depending on the condition of the drop foot. Uh, Elsa, sir, which type of brace used for the drop foot? Yes, that is the answer which I give you. Ikra Ahmad, which brace should be recommended for lower back pain? Depend upon the reason why there is a low back pain. Uh, you can have a compression support for the lower back, you can have the immobilizers for the lower back. So I think it is important that you find the reason uh, that why we have back pain. Uh, then Muhammad Yus Jajaz, sir, which brace you recommend for wrist drop? For wrist drop, we have uh, uh, drop wrist splints. Uh, they are available of alum in aluminium compression supports uh, and also plastic molded custom made ready made they are available then uh, we have uh, uh, yeah we have uh, okay is tkr patient which type of brace you used uh, okay which brace should be used in ankle deformities uh, well, uh, we are discussing ankle, but again, uh, you need to write which kind of deformity is in the ankle, then we have plenty of options. Uh, okay, so any exercise for the relief knee pain? Well, for the exercise, you can contact your uh, most senior or more beloved teacher, and they will tell you. I can tell you about the braces. Ramin Ahmed. Uh, oh. Adnan Chandia, sir, which sole is best in the foot? Oh my God, Arisha, what is the source of the knee pain? That source can be different uh, in the knee. It can be soft tissue. It can be structural issues. And then we have indication and contradiction indication. Uh, okay, sir. All these things used to treat knee joints. Sir, any one can use to treat muscles pain as saturated to the muscle. Well, I think uh, when you release the stress on the joint, uh, you can also release the stress on the muscles. So, limiting the movement it can help you uh, to uh, reduce the stress on the muscle and pain. Okay, then uh, we have, uh, let me search if I can go to some question back. Maliha said, braces for a CP child who can walk without walker but very unstable. Yes. That's a very good question from Maliha. Uh, yes, there are braces for the cerebral palsy children with the adjustable range of motion in the knee, which are called Keruli joints. And these joints are adjustable, lightweight. So we allow the range of motion. For example, uh, CP children, they are buckling their knees. So we keep the joint in extension or uh, with a limited flexion. So yes, the joints are available and you can use to improve their gait cycle. Then we have... Uh, Question from Iram Jabin: Can these treatment can give better in genovalgum? Yes, uh, in genovalgum you can again use wedges. Like for the varus knees, we use little wedges. For genovalgum, for genovalgus, you need medial wedges. So medial wedges, are you can always uh, use the insoles. So if the lady or a gentleman has a genovalgum, you can control with them with the medial arc and medial wedges. So that is very successful in too many cases. Okay, so then we have uh, what type of brace is recommended for ALCR, PCL tear, or meniscus tear? Angelica Khan. Uh, well, these are all hard braces uh, with the posterior anterior straps, but you have to make sure that you fasten the brace properly and the patient can move the knee comfortably and then you can select the range of motion. So these braces can be used for ACL and PCL and uh, sometimes you can also use the, uh, uh, these uh, type of braces too, which is with the compression, but with the adjustable range of motion. So in the ACL and PCL injuries, an important thing is to control the flexion, uh, to allow the flexion gradually. Then we have uh, Karina Khan, yeah, what is this? Okay, then what else? Uh, Shahzadi Momal says treatment of meniscal tear. Where well, if the tear of meniscus from orthotic point of view, we have to use immobilizer 
so you will not allow any sort of movement. Uh, then we have from Ramin, make shoes are but uh, tighter. Oh, uh, your question is gone, Ramin. I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, then we have from Sanama, certain chronic knee pain, which type of brace is used? If there's a chronic knee pain, then I think you have to find the reason uh, why the pain is chronic. But most importantly, I think you should use whether the compression support or you should use the hinge knee brace, which has a joint on the side, uh, because there might be some alignment issue in the joint. Neha Asif, how to treat uh, TB fibular? Oh, I gone. I'm uh, sorry. Which orthotic is best for OA Xenopsis? Uh, for osteoarthritis, uh, the best orthotic is the uh, wedges, uh, closed shoes. If they don't work, then you can choose a brace. So in the braces, you have option of the hinge knee brace and compression knee brace. So start with the compression knee brace and hinge knee brace. Hopefully, they will control the situation. Then, uh, okay. Uh, Tanya says, which is the best brace for OAS that I give answer. Then we have, uh, uh, okay. Okay, so then Sana says, I'm 45 old. I go so to look the chanak, pound me, sui chubni lakti hai. Maybe uh, Sana ji, it is uh, some spinal issue. So you can uh, contact uh, some. A specialist uh, of uh, neurology or uh, neurosurgeon because that may be tingling effect in your feet so you can trace that. Uh, anything else? That is Sanamanta, sir, which exercise is best for the knee pain and inf inflammation in the knee? Well, if there is inflammation and pain, ideally you should not do any exercise. You have to restrain, restrict your movement and you have to use a knee support which improve your proprioception, control, inflammation. And then once the inflammation is controlled and pain is less, then you must do uh, exercises. Rohan, which is the best orthotic for CP child? So Rohanji, uh, for CP we used uh, too many uh, orthotic devices, uh, Air Force, medical shoes, uh, KFOs, even tailor shoes. So all of, all of them, they are good if they are required. Nothing is good if it is not required. So I hope that uh, you got my point. Uh, okay, Rafia, uh, someone, okay. Okay, let me. How therapeutic braces? Oh, that's gone. Uh, Tanya says, which braces? Yeah, that I answered the question. Now, should we use hard braces in inflammation? Kainat Shah, she says, she asks, sh uh, should we use hard brace in inflammation? In inflammatory condition of the knee, normally we recommend the compression knee support and compression knee support with the hinges also. But if the, and the inflammation is too much, uh, that means no movement, then you can use a knee mobilizer until the inflammation comes down. Okay. So I'm, okay, that's, that's done. Any other question? Uh, Zainab, if knee cartilage get damaged, then it required surgery. Yes, if the damage to the cartilage is severe, of course, it needs surgery, and then later on you can use a brace. Uh, infant born with the bow legs, does it be braced or will it go all itself? Yes, yeah, it's a very interesting question if the child is born with the bow legs. Now, bow legs are uh, genoverum. Uh, in most cases, they, correct, they get correct by themselves. But if you think that the condition is prog progressive, it gets worse and worse, then you have to act. You have to act through medical shoes with the little wedges, or then you have to go for the knee braces in, work, in worse case uh, to correct the valgus, uh, varus tendency of the knees. But remember one thing that, uh, okay, uh, remember one thing that uh, you can never correct bone. So, it is very important for all of you that if there is a division in the bone, for example, if there is a genoverum and the tibia is in bow shape, tibia. So, we can't correct bone, nobody can correct bone. It can be done only by surgery. 
but if the deviation reaches the joint and you see there's a varus or valgus on the joint then we can apply some sort of pressures uh, uh, orthosis we can manage through the shoes uh, wedges or knee braces then we have some options but keep in mind if the deviation is only in the long bones uh, then you can't do anything try to protect the joints from getting deformed uh, anam says which uh, spine support best for lumbar straight uh, lumbar straight means flat back so that means you have you need to have a support which have a proper lordosis at the back so then it can help the patient uh, GM Alex says which brace is best for TKR uh, well I don't have the near braces now uh, uh, to, but uh, for TKR normally when they are in the initial stage uh, they need a brace uh, a metallic brace so they can judge the stability of the knee so once the stability of the knee is confirmed then they remove the hard brace and normally then no brace is used yes they use the silicon paddings uh, inside the shoes uh, so they can have shock absorbers and the replaced joint do not get unnecessary pressure from the ground reaction forces uh, then we have a question from uh, sir, okay so can we retry at oh my is gone uh patel says can we use brace for knee dislocation yes there's a, a dislocated knees there are braces it's like immobilizers because end of the day somebody has to replace the knee but to dam to prevent further damage you can always use a knee brace yes uh, then dr wasim says sir can we give traction or oh, is gone Fatma says, what is the best way to manage knee pain with the knee support? Then Hera says, how braces can help stabilize patella after patella dislocation? Well, the knee braces basically, uh, they have a proper groove for the patella. So once you place the patella in the right place, when you flex the knee, then the patella cannot escape literally violently. So that means it can control the subluxation, may not dislocation, but subluxation. So let me catch this one. Uh, wedges make shoes a bit tight. Uh, well, you know, uh, you need to, uh, Raminji, you have to uh, select uh, shoes which are spacious and they are purpose made shoes. But uh, you may not be able to use the wedges in all of your shoes like insoles. So when there's a certain condition, you, the patient has to be flexible and you have to buy shoes where there's more space. Okay. Uh, any question I have? All right. Uh, Zainab, any arthrotic use in? Oh, and the cyst. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, okay. Uh, what brace will be recommend in unhappy triad of knee joint? Nasreen Akhtar says. Uh, well, uh, these are like uh, soft braces. In worst case, you can use with the hinges. Uh, so soft compression braces are enough in these cases to stabilize and to control the pain. Uh, then we have which brace should be used in inflammation, sir? Uh, Ritz. Okay. So in the inflammation, normally use uh, high compression bandages, high compression knee supports, so they can stabilize and control the inflammatory condition. All right. Any therapy at home for complete loss of knee cartilage due to OA? Well, for therapy, I think uh, I can tell you about orthotic therapy. From orthosis point of view, we need to help this patient uh, in the osteoarthritis to realign the knee and to relieve the knee from excessive pressure. Uh, then Farheen says, how much extent nutrition can play a role in reducing the severity of such physio issues? Well, of course, uh, nutrition is extremely important uh, uh, that you take care of the right nutrients uh, in the right time. So that is why patients, they recover in hospital quickly than anywhere else in good hospital. 
because they, they take care of the nutrition. So, healing has a huge uh, link with the nutrition. Uh, then Suzy Abbasi says, what can a physio do for a plant or fish areas? And the physio can stretch the fascias to reduce the pain. Uh, the physio can tap the foot to control the pain and uh, to correct any uh, sort of uh, deviation in the foot like a pronation and supination. And the physio can also stretch the posterior group of the muscles to renew the whole foot and ankle. So that the physio is, the physio is very important in all these cases when there is inflammation. Uh, any other question? Uh, Ramin, wedges make the shoe tight or AP. What should we do if these are necessary but are not affordable for the patient? Uh, Ramin Ahmad, uh, wedges are cheap basically, they are not expensive. Uh, so, if you can't put the wedges inside the shoes, you can put wedges outside the shoes to sole. Uh, if the patient wants to use those shoes for me, I mean, I mean for some time. So, you have always an option, but depend how the person, uh, the person, uh, uh, approach these problems. So, AXA says, can we use these braces in all? Oh, no. Why is silicone useful in knee? Okay, so Sana Sheikh, my father had a fatigue at, uh, attack and could environment feel efficiency in the movement of the left leg and feel numbness in the leg. What would be the reason and uh, how can we treat? I think it needs a little more investigation. So, it might be really difficult to judge from here. I wish your father all the best. Uh, Doa says, scoliosis may qui brace use kar sakte hain ji doa ji bilkul inshallah phir next time hum scoliosis bhi baat karenge is a very important topic. To phir aap ke sab sawalon ka jawab mein de dunga aapko. Uh, Zainab says, can brace use for increased range of motion? Yes. Braces can be uh, in, uh, used to increase the range of motion in patients and that is the idea of the uh, brace. So, you can control the range of motion and you can improve the range of motion. So, silicon we use brace or not? Uh, yes, the answer is yes. And the answer is yes. Okay, so is it possible that the younger person able to get knee replacement therapy? Uh, Hera Ghazan. Uh, yes, certain, certainly. If the younger person uh, need a younger person able to get knee replacement therapy, uh, yes. I mean, uh, every patient need re knee replacement therapy uh, whenever there is such situation, uh, regardless the age. So the idea is to make sure that the knee function is restored. All right. Which book is good for orthosis study? Well, uh, plenty of books. Uh, I can send you a list uh, if you can text me. I can help you. Can we use, Sadia Khan says, can we use a brace for patient with the osteogenesis imperfecta? Uh, yes. I mean, it can uh, basically, these are customized braces and uh, because it's imperfecta, so a lot of structure is not perfect. So, the idea is to control the knee structure and to control any sort of pathological fractures and to realign the knee if there is a possibility. So, the person can take step on that or the, the patient can stand on that if it is stable. Then, it was seems, can you give me oh, traction and OA, oh, oh, sorry, it's gone. Okay. I am 21 year old, I have some pain in the right knee joint, standing or stay, what should I do? Well, Mr. Arsalan, I should say that you should go to a physician, you should go to an orthopedic surgeon, uh, they will detect why you have pain in the knee because you are so young. Mahil Jahan says, what is the reason of knee pain during questioning or during sitting? Well, because the knee stay in a very weird and awkward position for a very long time. So, then you keep pressing the soft tissues and the surfaces of the joint, they get irritation and the muscle remain in a very overstretched position for a very long time and then of course, it put n uh, pressure on the nerves. So, you feel pain and the joint is in stress. So, always try to sit in the right posture and better posture to relieve your joints. 
All right. Indication and condition of, of knee joint. Why we do not use knee braces for diabetic patient? Dura but, uh, Dura but ji, uh, I never said we don't use knee braces for diabetic patient. We use them, but we don't use them when the patient is not walking because in diabetic patient, the blood circulation is very low. Anything which compress the joint, it can reduce the blood circulation and that can cause more problems. So use the brace when the patient is in action, the patient is in move, then there's no problem with diabetic patient. Lavisha says that if you are having a heel pain for no reason, oh, it's gone. Send, uh, send, send me again, Lavisha, this question. Okay. And now it is the knee pain is uh, more common. Why and what is the reason? Angelica. Well, I think uh, uh, when you make the surrounding of the knee muscles very stronger, you make the uh, st uh, knee structure stronger, basically there's less pain but basically nowadays uh, because of different lifestyle uh, a lot of people they don't work on their feet and joints so try to strengthen your foot ankle and knee muscles when your legs will be stronger then it can take your body anywhere and you will be more you will be stronger so quadriceps is the life of knee joint so always work on the quadriceps keep them strong you will have hardly any problem so when the quadriceps and the hamstring they have balance situation then you will see that the joint mechanism works very well less pressure on the joint surfaces so try to uh, create a very balanced uh, uh, situation aisha khan says please answer my question aisha i need to see your question please again toba says all these bridges available in pakistan maybe not but some of them yes Nemra says, how to protect the knee in rheumatoid arthritis? Uh, if you want to protect knee in the arthritis, uh, Nemra Siddiq, it is important that first you focus on the good footwear, supportive footwear, inside soft, outside hard. So when you have knee pain, always use, uh, if you have, even if you have foot pain, always use stiff soles, closed heels, inside soft, outside hard. Realign your feet, you will see that your knee will be realigned. And then if that does not work, then you have to uh, target your knees for any sort of uh, knee brace. Then Karina says, how does silicon pad help in shock absorption? Uh, Karina Khan, uh, silicon is a medical grade uh, uh, rubber type material. And uh, when the patient walk on this, basically it gets compressed. It doesn't react to your body weight. So it takes a lot of pressure out of the heel. So when it takes the pressure out of the heel, that means that the knees and hips and back, they're relieved. So these heels are uh, magic. And uh, whenever you have any pain in the ankle, knee, or even back, use them. They are really helpful. So I think I'm uh, over now. Uh, last question I will take. Uh, Binti Hossein, what is the reason of Intoing work in children. Yes, interesting question. Binti Hussain. The intoing is basically we call the uh, it is because of the femoral antiversion uh, because you know the uh, angle between the uh, femoral shaft and the femoral neck uh, that is normally uh, more than needed uh, in these cases. So uh, the uh, limbs come inward, so that causes the intoing. So basically, it's not only the feet that they come in, but if you see the whole leg, it is in towing, it is coming inside. So the in towing is normally controlled through the medical shoes, we call anti wearer shoes, but it is normally not controlled 100%. Then we have to go above and we use like a, a we call a teratax and we call torsion cables. So then we go above the hip to control the uh, rotation of the limb. Moiz Sheikh says, sir, while playing football, my knee get extended and feel inflamed in the area. How I can treat? Well, if the knee extended, as I said, you can put a little heel in your shoes, a small heel. It will stabilize your uh, he, uh, knee, basically. So try this in your uh, sport shoes. Uh, last question I will take, Sadia Khan. Which arthrosis can be used in the osteoporosis? I think that I answered. 
Aisha Khan Sertel side effect of the wearing high heels. So Aisha Khan, uh, she want to ask that what are the side effects of wearing high heels. First of all, I will tell you the good point of high heels. Uh, when you use high heels, basically they are good for your foot arches uh, only. And uh, so as a result, the weight goes from the heel to the forefoot. So forefoot is normally in trouble. So if you use the continuously high heel arches, uh, sorry, high heels, uh, then most probably you will end up with some forefoot pain, metatarsalgia, or maybe some uh, stress fracture in the forefoot. In other way, it can cause you increased lumbar lordosis and then it can cause you some sort of like a slip disc or any other uh, lower back problem. So I think using, uh, uh, using um, uh, high heels continuously uh, and for a longer period is never recommended. Uh, it can cause you foot problem, knee problems and also in the hip. Okay. So Bhavishta says, a child has a bow legs, he is unable to walk, how we treat? Uh, well, the bow leg, you need to immobilize the knee joint. If the child has a severe bow legs, you have to make a care for, and you, you, can, you can allow the ankle joint movement, but you keep the uh, knee joint stiff, and you put pressure on the knee joint in the right way, so that you can uh, help the child to walk. Okay. So I think we have to wind up. We are over our time. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, uh, time and being with me. And I know it's a very vast subject from orthotic point of view. And we have physiology, we have pathological conditions, we have biomechanical functions. So I'm very sure we can't wind up wind up everything like in one hour time. But uh, you are always welcome to send me questions and uh, have any inquiry. Don't hesitate to ask me question and uh, I will answer you certainly. Uh, at the end, I'm very uh, thankful to the Physio Master uh, and uh, their um, organization, uh, their uh, uh, staff, uh, Mr. Dr. Rauf and also Zabinda, Dr. Zabinda, uh, that they communicated and we arranged all the session and inshallah we will continue in future so we can, uh, we can, uh, I can uh, give you more knowledge about orthotic devices to the physical therapist and uh, more. And uh, inshallah, we will do it for the benefit of our professions and our um, country. Uh, thank you very much and I wish you all the best.